Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends, these are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photography. If you are a creator needing post-production, consultation, or promotion, Walt Mills is your guy. Whether short films, YouTube production, photography work, or a new headshot, he can help you find a solution to match your needs. To learn more about Walt and his work, go to photosbywalt.com. We also want to give a shout out to our friend Chris Klo of Upbeat Media Productions. If you're in need of turnkey special event production, Klo is your go-to. You can learn more about him and his work at Upbeat Media Pro. Dot com. All right, we are super excited. Welcome our guest to the show today, Cheryl Powers. We're excited to have you here today, Cheryl. I'm excited to be here. So we're going to tell our audience just a little bit about you. She is like a powerhouse. That's all I'm going to say. Like, I'm just learning about her and all the great things she's done. And so just to give you guys a little, a little tidbit of information, she's the owner of Empowered Advantage, which is she's also a small business advocate, a group's benefit specialist. Her company provides a unique suite of, no, suite of non-insurance programs. Of the many things Cheryl's accomplished, she's a voiceover talent, a producer, a coach. She was in radio for over 30 years, has appeared on different networks. She founded ClassicalRush.org, and she currently has a podcast called Network Today, where she co-hosts with her fellow podcaster, Rob Bliss, who was also a featured guest on our show. So welcome, Cheryl. We are so excited to have you here today. Oh, what a thrill, man. You made my day. You too. (laughs) She's so awesome. I love her. You are so awesome. Well, um, when you said, hey, just be yourself and have fun, I'm like, yes, I can do that. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I I think that if it were that heavy handed, oh, hey, it's all scripted. Now we have to practice. Let's have a trial run. I mean, I'm like, I'm just so not that. So I'm so this because Jennifer, you're so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're not really good at scripted. I mean, I have my scripted intro and that's only because we made tweets. Tweaks on it again. <laughs> yeah, we made these little tweaks on it, and so I don't have it memorized yet. So I do have my little cheat sheet here. But yes, I, you know, I feel like we just have to kind of let things flow. Like we have a format. We know where we're going with this. We know what the the, the project is and what the message we're trying to share. Yeah. But everybody that comes on here is unique, and we kind of just want to highlight them where they are. You know what I mean? And you can't really script that. You can't. Right? And the best gems come out mm. of those random tandem conversations yeah and ours are rapid fire <laughs> questions <laughs> that's right that's right so i'm anxious to see where this goes for yeah. the next 30 minutes yes we find out every we find out all kinds of fun stuff on this show about people right that's the that's what makes it so much fun here so do i get to ask you some questions at the end i don't know maybe mm-hmm. i don't know I, well, well yeah let's see let's go for it come on chris let's go it's never happened every now and then somebody does i mean yeah we could all right cheryl so i want to start off i want you to tell us a little bit about how we got to where cheryl is today because you've got a lot going on you're doing amazing things and you got this like expansive background so just kind of give us a little overview of how we got to where we are today but, well, so let me start by saying God blesses our broken roads. Oh, so, yeah, I like I, it. I have to say that. So um, it was, I loved radio. I studied radio in college at ORU, and um, I thought I'd just be there forever. I said, oh, just put my tombstone at the top of the Fitzhugh you know, 75 building. I'm just going to die here. I loved it. I loved yeah. helping clients craft messages. I know you're all about that, um, helping small business owners. But that's when I grew up, well, that's what I grew up in when I got started in eight, 19, I said 1885. <laughs> that's what it felt like. I know so, oh, that's right. Well, <clears throat> 1985. Yeah. I'm not that old, but uh, but unless I look darn good, don't I? You, you so, are amazing. Yes, that's right. So brought 19- to you by Oil of Olay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So um, uh, that's great. I um, got started at KDNT, which is 94 and a half country at the time, 94.5 FM in this market, and they were brand new, and I was brand. You know, I, I can't even drink. I'm 20. Yeah, I'm like. I'm like, hey, yeah, summer my senior year, I can get some internship credits, and that's kind of how it started. I was both on air, and and then they gave me the yellow, the yellow pages. Does anybody know what the yellow? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, we all so remember. It's those. not just for booster right. chairs anymore, right? right? right. So, um, yes. so it was uh, uh, the yellow pages, and so I would sell during the day, and then I was on air in the afternoon. And by the end of the summer, they said, hey, do you not want to go back to college? Because we'll offer you an opportunity here. And so that's how I got started. And I loved it. I loved walking, you know, into a McKinney. Uh, mom and pop shop and you're talking to mom and pop, right? right? And then you develop a message and you get butts and seats. That was, I loved that, right? So you get to watch the ROI, but dial forward 30 years. 
radio changed a lot. Yeah. So 19 of those, I was at CBS. We started at 1037 KVIL, and that is we kept buying stations. It you know turned to, morphed into that behemoth. Um, and God bless them, but it just it. I say I didn't really leave radio; it left me. Gotcha. Because. I'm not that person. I'm not a good yes person. I'm a, yeah. I'm a great why person. Ah, but, I like <laughs> so, it. But, but why do we have to do that? So yeah. that's why it was just, it was time for me to start building a bridge out. I was building a, a television show actually about single people owning homes. Okay. Um, so that got me started building homes. Um, a couple at Knox Henderson, is, which is where I was living in, to kind of script the storyboard and have this resource for single people who own homes. Um, and uh, little did I know, and I, I was co-hosting a real estate radio show at the time. Okay. So what it's worth with Jeff Brand uh, over in Flower Mound, amazing people. But who would have thought? How are we not in the thick of the conversation? And we don't know that 2008 is, is hitting, right? It's right. coming. So that's where I kind of got stuck. Um, six years of these houses, and um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm done with old houses. And I felt like at this point, I realized entrepreneurs need help. They need help beyond mm. themselves. But we tend to say, hey, I want to do it. I can do it all. Right. I know, I know you're really good at doing it all. So, so are you. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell me that that's not. So I, right. you know, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need help with the review of a contract. Yeah. Now I've got a potential lawsuit with this person and blah, blah, blah. So that's how I tapped into some of my first subscription-based services. And I'm like, so the law firm access, then we rolled in an identity theft to access, and then we started rolling in some others, uh, healthcare access. And so at the juncture of 2013, I started Classical Rush with a, um, a co-founder. So uh, it was a classical music on demand. Okay, yeah. So for kids, basically. Yeah. So really, that's what it was about. And um, then by 2015, we kind of curtailed that. And I, then I went full, full time into what I'm doing now. Um, and really just have, because of what I went through, it's, I mean, because that's, you know, from your experience, yeah. I didn't just like take a job from the classifieds. Right. It was built from my own experience saying, I want to help other people like me understand that there are people, experts, things in place, tools resources to help them um, get ahead of these crazy curves. Don't wait until you're in the mid midst of the you know dynamite exploding to try yeah. to put on your protection suit, right? So right. Try, try to do that in advance. And so that's how Empowered Advantage came about, was really um, finding a, a scope of services that helped address those everyday life issues. So okay. does that kind of make more yeah. sense? Yeah. So I know it's like really a bottle of wine. No, but, <laughs> but I think I think all of our journeys, I mean, there, I, th I feel like anybody that's been in the entrepreneur space for any period of time, okay has a journey like yeah. that. Like it's, and they're all, and, and they're non-linear. It's no, like you come out and this is like, like we all have these like set paths that we're going to do, right? And we realize somewhere along the way that there are pieces from that that we needed in yeah. our life. Like we needed yeah. something from that, yeah. but that's not really defining who we are, right? And then we evolve and start to morph into these other things that we feel like usually fit like some something in our need, yeah. like something we know that maybe helped us, but also help other people. And so I think this is all part of that process, right? Like it is, it'd be very boring as an entrepreneur if you didn't have all that, right? <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> you know I mean? it, linear is a great word. That's yeah. a great word because what that says to me is just flat, right? You're just right. flatlined. Right. Um, but thank goodness we kind of get with the paddles come out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. We get jump started and, and it's painful. It's hard, but, but then we're reawakened. Right. And I know you've had some hard right yeah. and some hard left turns in your right. life too. Right. So, um, and with that, you are who you are right, right? now. You look back and you say, Wow, I, I see why I went through that because right. it really now lends itself to a deeper conversation on a level that I wouldn't have been able to do if it were just a, hey, I'm going to take that job and get my check and go home. Right? Yeah, so. I mean, I can't imagine, I can't imagine having the depth to be able to really be passionate, do what you do without having to come deep to something that says, you know, I've got this and I know other people may need this or have this and have to learn to, right. to take, to, to use this. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I really feel like there's a lot to be said to that. And, and that's why I really enjoy the show when I hear these stories about people when they've, you know, these things they've gone through or these changes that they've made. Because all the pieces I feel like that we do are really, they overlap in yeah. some way, some fashion, right? Like there's something that you took from, you know, the music and the, and the journalism and all of that that's helped you do what you're doing today, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be doing your podcast today had you not have that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like all these things overlap and there's yeah. pieces we pull from all of it to make kind of where we're at in that center lane, you know? You're exactly right. And um, man, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful the way you, you're bringing all this together. And I love the whole dreamers concept because yeah. everybody's got a dream. Oh yeah, absolutely. What, what's the difference between who achieves 
uh, an outcome from that dream and who doesn't, who right. just lets it s- sit in their little brain, mulling it over every night, um, is the the application of um, walking it out. Right. Right. So really implementing some steps to, to begin to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to risk it all and just go for it. Um, and that's what makes a, that's what takes a dreamer into being an actual, you know, an, an action item situation. So um, with that, I was thinking about one of the hardest parts of my life was the time of 2009 through 2012. So okay. the, at the time, the housing crash got started in 2008. And we're like, I'm like, what the flip? Yeah, <laughs> what just happened? that's a big time. Yeah, for a lot so of people. So my husband, my current husband and I had just gotten married. Okay. April 2008, put our homes in the market the next week, and the next week it was all over. Wow. Well, and then dial forward a year later, um, I got a call from a company up in Vermont. And they said, Cheryl, we were looking at your website, and we said, hey, you um, do both sales and on air. We don't have too many mm. people who do that, right? So yeah. who uh, left brain, right brain, would you teach for us? I'm like, oh, what the flip? So this is what I'm saying for <laughs> entrepreneurs. Just just have your heart open to yes, yeah. I'll at least explore it, right? And I'm like, no, 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 no. My family's all educators. I suck. I'm terrible. I would never do it. And um, But then my dad got sick and he's in California. So okay. where I grew up. So I'm like, oh man, if I could have the California territory, I'll do it. So I go on the road and I start teaching at night. Okay. And after two years of that, I was exhausted, but you be, you start picking up skill sets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so dial forward, we're talking about broken roads and pieces of the puzzle. That was such an integral piece of the puzzle that was exhausting. My love, love my husband because husband, you stuck with me through all of that. <laughs> He's like, we just got married and you're gone. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh it, it's so awesome because it makes you be really organized. Yeah. It, it forces you to organize your thoughts. It forces you to get better prepared. And I'm just so thankful for these really hard times that happen mm-hmm. in our life because mm-hmm. they make us better later on. Yeah, I would so. agree with you on that. And and I think that's, I, I think, again, that also is the blessing because a lot of people when they have, and I'm not, I, I think it goes both ways. A lot of people when they have those hard times, they look at that as the stopping, like the the putting the brakes yeah. on and stopping and the rest of us go, okay, well that sucked, right? We know it did. And we, we, we try to go, okay, what can I gain from that? Like what, what, what can I take away from that? So I don't do that again, <laughs> right? Like don't make that same mistake again, yep. but also what can I gain from that to propel me to go forward into this next yeah. phase? So I think those lessons, some of us have had to have a lot of them, you know, some of us are stubborn. We have to have a lot more of them. You know? <laughs> some of us, yeah, are, are longer learners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we learn, we do learn. I always say we do. If you stick around long enough, you do learn messages but, but, from all of that, right? But that's right. I think that's what's great about all of this I think with entrepreneurs is for those of that stick around though like I said really they they understand that this is a journey it's a process and it's a va- you're gonna have you're gonna be in the the, the tre- trenches sometimes and in the bad yeah. places but you know this and if you know this going in then your job is to figure out how to get out of it how yeah. do you pull yourself back out rebound and keep moving forward yeah right? and, and learn from it absolutely yeah. good yeah. stuff I love it. so are you still doing voiceover talent or no yeah, I still... Uh, You're amazing, by the way. She's amazing. All right, you guys, like, go find her page. And we're going to make sure we get all this in the, the notes because I listened to it last night and I was so impressed. I was like, she is good. <laughs> so uh, God bless me. Somehow I had no idea. That, I remember when I walked into my first radio station and I said, hey, uh, I'll shine shoes, I'll pour coffee. What do you want to do? He says, you have a good voice. You want to go on the air? And I'm like, sure. I do have a great voice. You but, do. But we don't know we do. Yeah, right. None, right. None, of us, none of us really right. hear our voice the way it is. So I yeah. was really just blessed that I had a, this this manager who said, yeah, go behind the mic. Why not? You know, I'm a kid. I don't care. Right. Um, so now I'd probably be a little more like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. But I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, so it's yeah. this internship. It's just a summer intern program that ended up going longer. But um, but uh, I'm really thankful for that that time and what I do now is uh, most people know me as the Dalworth girl. Okay, da- awesome. The next best thing to new is Dalworth clean. So um, there you go. <laughs> I love it, Cheryl. So that's the one I do. I worked with James Smith and that amazing Shane Hobbs and those teams over there since 2005, I think. Okay, awesome. So yeah, so I, I love that. But again, it's not just the voiceover part for me. I think what helped me was because, um, and I don't know if Larry Thompson is even still in this market, but um, he and his wife are some of the big voices in the country. Okay. Like they do some of the big stuff. And he yeah. happened to be at a radio station that I was at, KLTY, and um, he, he taught me something. So this is just for entrepreneurs who maybe want to be, a, you got, you're an aspiring voice 
voiceover artist. Just keep this in mind. He says, I want you to take the script and walk out the door. And I'm like, what? Mm. But everybody thinks I have a good voice. And he's like, mm, you're not thinking about what you're saying, Cheryl. And truly, ah. so I was so thankful for that that kick in the pants, and yeah. it, I had to go back and really think about it, and it helped me now um, moving forward to really think about what you know, what what am I saying, and why are we just throwing out words because we want to sound good, and um, but right, but so that's how I I learned the hard way to yeah, <laughs> I cried a little, I think, but Plus, <laughs> I know sometimes okay. we have to have those moments. They 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 feel so bad when they happen, right? But yeah. later on, you can look back and say, okay, well that there was a reason that needed to be said, and it helped me get where I needed to be now. So yeah, that's but good. and I never thought that I'd use it again. Honestly, yeah. I really thought that there's a separation here, like it was all compartment. My sure. radio career, the voiceover career over here, and then let's start the benefits business over here. But then, then comes along Rob Bliss. Yes. He says, Cheryl, hey, I want to start a, a networking podcast show. You want to do it with me? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and you guys are so like fun together too. I was listening again to some of y'all's stuff yesterday and I'm like, just the ebb and the flow kind of thing. You know, it's so great. It's, it's Mr. It, Canadian about yeah. <laughs> again. Oh, don't you know, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Rob is so great too. Cause he's such a friendly soul. He's just a, he's just a great person. You know, we had him on here and we had such a nice time when he came on too. So he is, he is a lot of fun. He is a lot of fun. And so I'm really thankful, but it is so to how we got started, right? God yeah. bless us Broken Road. I've never seen how the pieces of this puzzle come together to create this um, beautiful picture, really yeah. this juncture where they all kind of work together. Yeah. I mean, same for you. Right. 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 So your marketing background, yeah. your business background, all yeah. leads to. You know, what's interesting, though, I always and close for me say this before, though, I didn't study journalism or any of that in school. I did go into marketing. I did that piece in business. But interestingly enough, I took a public speaking class in college. And you've heard me say this before. Like, I, I remember having to get up and do this whole speech, and we could only have note cards. It was an impromptu speech. And I got up and had to talk in front of a group of people. And I swore that day, I was like, I will never talk in front of a group of people ever again. <laughs> ever again. <laughs> And something happened. And then I went into the network marketing space and I started to have to do presentations. And then I moved up into a leadership position role. And then I had started having to train. Then I went into another company and they put me on a stage with 500 people and I had to train. So it was like one thing, all these little things, like you said, started coming together. But here I was, go back to that, that public speaking course. And I was like, I will never talk in front of people ever. Like I hated it <laughs> that bad. <laughs> so see, you never know. And that's the beauty of that's this right. journey when you're open to these opportunities that come and you cannot shut the door. And when you get so laser focused on just one thing, you shut out all these other things, you know, and, and, and here's what's even funnier. When I go back and, you know, I was telling my husband one day, I said, all the things that I do right now in my life are really about, I love producing things. I love creating things. I love getting people to do things with me, like getting people involved in things. These are all things I did when I was a kid. I made mm -hmm. projects. I made clubs. I had people in them. We did things. We, we made money. We tried to make money. Yeah, that's you know, right. we, did, we did things. I recruited people to mow yards <laughs> with me so we could make money. But really, you know, we, when you think about it, everything really overlaps. And that's yeah. what you have to do is learn to take all the pieces in your life and go, okay, what, what did I get out of that that I need to pull here? What did I get out of this that I need to pull here? And so yeah. you've basically have kind of, it's all come full circle for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so. really for entrepreneurs who are feeling a total disconnect between different sections of their life, don't do, yeah. do just take advice from Jennifer <laughs> right now, or she says, glean a little from each one of those yeah. and yeah. find ways to incorporate that into this beautiful quilt of life. Yeah. Right. You got to be like open to that. Cause the road, the road is an interesting one, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> both the, in personal and in business, right? Like the, both. That's right. So what was the pivot point for you? Um, into what, doing what I'm doing now? Oh my God, there was a lot of them. There was a, <laughs> but was, was there one like that you look back and you say, Hey, that was, well, it would, it would have been when I had my health crisis, when I was diagnosed with my, my nerve condition, because it, it, it forced me to two things. It forced me to have to step down from a leadership position I'd held for 15 years, which was a big humbling thing for me because I had held that for a while. I mean, I came from Houston to Dallas. Everybody here knew me in that position. So I had never even been in a different position with the people here that knew me. Um, so that, but also it forced me to as, uh, reassess what was important to me in life and like where I wanted to go. 
Mm. And I don't know that I knew all that at the time because I think it opened the, it, it sent me down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. But those times are so important. Yeah. When you have that bit of downtime, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden you gain a new perspective, like yeah. something like the paddles came on, right? Yeah. And well, I get, said, yeah, I said I got pinned against the wall. It was at that point, it was a do or die situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it's more like a, 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 my mental capacity was bad, and so I had I was forced to um, wow say that I'm not I can't live I'm not going to live like this. I'm, I made a decision to say I'm not going to continue my life in this fashion. If I do not change something and then that starting point was my health at first. Yeah. I had to get that under control. But then once yeah. I got that, then it became how did I get there in the first place? Yeah. How did I end up there? And how do I prevent that from happening again? Like how do yeah. I ch and, and that really summed up to really how I was living my life. And so I had to look at what was going on and say this is not working. I need to change this. And so it, it's like one thing begets another and it just yeah. sends you down the rabbit hole. And so it's, it's an evolution. So question, now are you able to help others who you see might be approaching that precipice of some kind of breakdown or some kind of, hey, your body's not keeping up mm. with, you're going to, you know, you might want to reassess. Yeah. If they're open to it, yes. <laughs> you so, see it, but. Yeah, so I see it. I see it. Like I, I can pretty much listen to people and I can figure out pretty quickly where their areas that need to be, but they, they have to be in a place where they're open to that because a yeah. lot of times they're coming to, and they don't really know what they don't know yet. They yeah. don't, they don't see quite the same thing I'm seeing. Cause I'm a big picture. I can see the overview and yeah. I, and, I, and that's one of my strengths is that I don't care about the minutia because to me, the minutia is exactly that the minutia, you know, I think, talk about a business, a business may come to you and they're like, well, I need more leads. Okay, well, the reason you need more leads is not because you need more leads. It's probably because you need to get better at networking. You need to get better at having a conversation and being authentic, right? Yeah. Like you need to learn how to That's have good. have the contextual intelligence enough to, to read people and be able to have conversations and know when to pull back and when yeah. to go forward, right? Like yeah. scripting, sending somebody five emails is going to agitate them after a while, and yeah. especially if you haven't had a face-to-face -face or yeah. a, and then you slide into their inbox, right? Yeah. So there's a lot I see on the overhead, but they have to be they have to be open to that conversation. And that's so you become a student then, if I'm hearing this right, yeah. really identifying the symptoms, yeah. seeing the symptoms, but then the problem behind the symptoms. Yeah, yeah find the problem. So yeah. helping people kind of unbundle that. And yeah, see the, exactly. That's so. that's awesome. A lot of a lot of the process. Kind of, yeah, there's a lot to all that. You got It's but like I said, it's all the journey. It's it's what we learn in the process of going through all these things that, yeah. that make this work. Yeah. It is. All right, Cheryl, you're awesome. So I want to ask you, um, cause you did mention, you know, getting the 2008 thing, but going through like this transitioning, you know, from like, we've, we've kind of talked about this coming full circle, but transitioning from this radio into this other thing, what would you say was maybe the biggest challenge other than this 2008, that traveling and being away after being just married, but anything else that I think the like biggest challenge is so coming out of the gate, I was really blessed to have, you know, 30 years of radio clients. Right. right so right. I was able to go to them and say, Hey, people's, um, this is what I'm doing now. And most of them say, Hey, Cheryl, yeah, let's talk about how we can, you know, work with you or whatever. But then, and so we're like super busy, like, man, we're out of the gate, we're killing it. But then all of a sudden you find that now I'm trying to run a business and I'm trying to make my calls and now yep. I'm trying to, you know, service the employee teams and I ain't got no time. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. um, and then I found myself upside down and getting behind the, the eight ball. And so then I had to stop and say, okay, I, now I, I'm going to have to eliminate some things yeah. and I'm going to have to put in some systems. I heard you talking. Yeah. To Systems. Yeah, about that. So <laughs> yeah. um, putting in systems is, is really important, even if they're just for yourself, right? You yeah. don't have to hire in people to do systems necessarily if you don't want to, but you do have to begin to identify the time wasters. Um, and so that probably for me was the hardest. And, and maybe this is another kind of part of that. So I've always fancied myself independent. Mm. So, yeah. you know, I'm a radio salesperson, yeah. love all my people's um, cubicle living, <laughs> so setting up tent. I mean, we're like family, right? You have yeah. your office husband and your, you know, right. your office nephews and nieces and all yeah. this. But, um, but I've always thought, oh, you know, I, I really love working from home. I love being out on the road. I love, you know, being away from people. But all of a sudden you find when you're, when you are away from people that you miss people. Yeah. So I think that might've been the hardest thing. And maybe that's one of the things too, that I hear from other entrepreneurs is that they say, Hey, um, all of a sudden I'm getting off track, right? Yeah. I don't have people to bounce things off of. I don't have a coffee pot to go chat with people at and kind of just kind of get recentered or, you know, be able to go into the boardroom and just say, Hey, can we have a discussion about something? So that was, 
uh, just not having that team, that ready to go mm. team around me was hard. Yeah. Um, so then I, that's where networking came in. Yeah. Right. So there were some people in organizations, you know, like when you were with yours too, that you can still go to those same people, but you needed people outside of that. And right. so, um, so I have to thank my husband. He was the one who, who tapped into Jeff McKissick's networking okay. group. And that's okay. how it all started for me. You meet Ron Kennedy and Jeff McKissick, it's over. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. Done. So, so that, uh, I just probably why I'm such an avid proponent of helping people understand how to network and, and do without just being a time waster, yeah. right? It's not yeah. just about glad handing. It's about making money at the end of the day too, because I had to go through that process. We all did. Right. Um, so, and I don't know if that was a challenge for you because you're so super smart, but I, smarter well, thank than you. Me. No, <laughs> thank you. But no, listen, I think that is so true because that's one of the things I said, because I, I did have mentors the entire time that I, you know, in that space that I was in. That was one why part of the reason why I do what I do because so many entrepreneurs don't understand that. They yeah. don't understand the importance and the value of that because yeah. they've never been privy to that yeah. really, right? They don't yeah. get it. And I've never really worked without having somebody kind of in my corner that has been like I'm hard, I'm in an accelerator program right now with a team of people that are making like six figures. Like I'm in a group with these people and it's an online thing, but I have access to the mentor and like I love that because yeah. we're not talking all the time, but we know we're all working yeah. and we know it's a safe place to ask good questions and go get, you know, get the answers we need. So we're not just out there in the world. And that's the hardest thing is when an entrepreneur is out there trying to do their business and they don't have anybody to bounce ideas off. Yeah. And you need people in different circles, like in yeah. different niches than you, right? Yeah. That's it. I know, like, I'm thinking right now, like one of my clients, it's like every week I get on with her and she's amazing. And I spend 30 minutes usually listening to her bounce ideas. She just talks the whole time, which is amazing because I don't say a word. <laughs> what? Even. Believe it or not, I don't say a word. I let her go, right? And she'll just go and then she'll like, she'll say, okay, so what do you think about all that? And I'm like, it's great. I like this part right here. Like this one, this one thing I'll pick up on. But I just let her go. And that's what they want. They yeah. really just want to be able yeah. to have somebody to go, okay, here's all my ideas. What do you think about this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like they're not looking for you to change it. They're not looking for you to fix it necessarily. Yeah but bounce the ideas. Well, and something about verbalizing things, mm -hmm. right? We kind of work through them that way. Yeah. And when they come out, all of a sudden we're like, why was I even thinking that that was a problem? Because I just said it and I'm like, nah, <laughs> not right. at all why, what I was thinking. And I've just solved my own problem just yep. by speaking it out loud. So yep. declaring things and certainly declaring them to accountability partners. Yeah. So um, and tell me, what's this accelerator? That, well, this is a... It's a different, I don't know. This guy is like, he's a Swedish guy. I'll tell you about okay, him. He's okay. amazing. But okay. he found me, actually found me. He's a very small group of people. And he actually had built a, um, it was a clothing line. I can't even think of the name of it. It's in my notes. But he, it was, it was a main, like, clothing line that was out in the stores or whatever. And then um, he built that. And then he, he'll tell you all the stories about how he bankrupted that, brought back. And then he built an on a, basically a coaching, created a DNA kit and did an, a coaching business and then took everything he gained from those two to now work into the online high ticket space where he's actually helping us engineer uh, basically an exit strategy kind yeah. of thing. But the big thing that I love about it is just having the access to him. Because a lot of times when you're working with these really big coaches, you don't necessarily have access to the actual coach. You have to their people, oh, their, their people, yeah, right? Yeah. So we have access to actually somebody that has done the work, is in the trench, doing it right now, you know, to show us. So I'll, I'll tell you about it if you're interested. Yeah, it's, that, it's pretty, it's, it's intense, but... For me, it's good because I need that. I like being around those kind of people and yeah. really being in the space of those people that are like grinding, you know. Yeah, like and, and, there. and there are sayings that really speak to that too. So you want to do, you want to find those people who are a little better than you, absolutely, right? And not better as a person, or right? Like pious or anything, right. but but they've achieved maybe a little more, mm -hmm. so that you can push yourself a little higher and. Um, I think it's important to identify those people in your life, and maybe it's not an organized fashion, but at least a couple of people yep. who are um, a little more elevated, have a little more experience, um, so that you can glean from that and be yeah. mentored. But um, that's beautiful. So that gives me a little glimpse into your. I know this is like turning like our conver I knew this conversation was going to be like this. Day. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk to you. I'm like, I knew this was going to go like this because Cheryl's. You're like me, so we're going to both be doing this. That's right. It's like it's fun. No, it's great. And I was going to say something. I totally forgot. Oh, when you were talking about that, it made me think of like 
you don't want to be the smartest person in the room, right? Like you don't, that is a, that is just a really bad spot yeah, to yeah, be in. Yeah. And when I'm in those kind of situations, I know I need to leave. Like <laughs> I need to get out of this room. I need to find another room, right? There's your exit strategy. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get stagnant. Yeah, if you are yeah. the smartest one, yeah. you're going to be in, in the room. You're going to be complacent, right? Yeah. And, and, and no matter, I don't know if you feel this way, but when I go into situations where people are better, I'm stressed a little bit. Like I get stressed, yeah. but I know I need that just a little bit because that's what's going to push me to move because otherwise I get too complacent. And then I'm like, well, yeah. I'm the best one in this room right now. So I guess <laughs> I'll just sit here, <laughs> you know, we got to be in different rooms, right? So we, we do. There was this guy and uh, I, he's passed a couple of years ago, but he spoke to us as a sales group and radio a long time, time ago, Joe Charbonneau. Um, his group, I think, is still alive in Addison and thriving probably. But um, he he had all, we had these little note cards. We write down these little sayings and I love them. This particular one speaks to this. It was um, people fall into one or two categories. They're mm. either wind in your sail or an anchor on your tail. Ooh. And that was life-changing for me. That got into yeah. my belly. And then when you're talking about these situations where you're stagnant, right? You yep. got this anchor. You have to you have to know when to cut it. And it's yep. hard. It's hard when you're like, I can bring them all along. Right? Yeah, I you can can't drag do this that, anchor. right? Yeah. And, and you can't. So no. um, I, I needed wind in my sails. And I had to learn to start. You don't have to totally ditch people, but sometimes you kind of Separate, put them, put them yeah. you know, down in the cabin. You know, I, I, I say that even in networking, like in net, because you go to, you know, I love all my networking people, but there are different groups you go in. And I, I joke about this. I say, they're the groups where we go to socialize. We're just going to drink. It's going to be a, it's going to be a pretty, a, a fun party. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause you're not going to get any. Then there's the ones where I go, where I go in and I'm like, Oh, that was good. Like I needed to meet those people today because they've got unique stories. Yeah. They got things that I need to know. Right. So I agree with you. I think it comes in all the places and you have to be careful where you spend your time and whom you choose to spend that with, because it, it makes a difference in your, you are like the people you hang around, you know, that's right. And, it, and you have to make money. So, <laughs> Right. So don't hang around so broke people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or you're going to be broke. That, that, that's right. That's right. It's a lesson I'm having with my kids right now because they're all in the young, you know, teen to young adult age. And like my, my middle child, you're going to laugh. So Chloe already knows this. Her car got totaled at the beginning of July. So she realized everybody she knows doesn't have cars. None of them have cars. She says to me, she goes, What's with all these people don't have cars? I'm like, I don't know. I wouldn't be hanging around people who don't have cars because that just isn't work. I said, I think you need some new friends. <laughs> but here's the good news. Talk about power of persuasion because she tells me the other day, one of her friends not only got a car coming, but she got a job. I said, well, what did you do? Did you? She said, I kept telling her, you got to do something. I said, well, it, hey! it paid off. Like all of my work, she she. She just kept pushing her along, kept, you know, kept hounding her, and the girl got a car, got a car coming and a job. Are you a proud mama? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I was just laughing because there's like so many lessons in that whole thing. Yeah. She like totals a car, realizes she's having this moment because they're all like, none of her friends have cars. They can't go anywhere. They're like, hey, do you want to go do something? She's like, what do you want to do? None of us have cars. We're going to go Uber back and forth. <laughs> that's, that's, oh my gosh. Let's so, get life lessons exactly. from the kids. And exactly. the weirdest thing about kids today, we were I know. talking about this. Like when I yes. was 15, I got my immediately. Yes, like, we I'm all driving. did. I'm getting out of the Day house. Dave, our birthday, we're dri we get our driver's yeah, license. Exactly. Yeah. Or we some were... of us were driving before the driver's license. Right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But nowadays, but, it's just like, I'm, I'm like, How, what? Yeah, yeah, that's, what? Do you not like freedom? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, you can ask Paige. She's been pretty much like, I haven't had a car. She's going Saturday to finally, we got the insurance finally taken care of. We're going to look for a car. She's, she got called into work. They wanted her to come into work. She said, no, I'm going to look for a car. So oh, yeah, but it was like all these funny things coming up and I'm just sitting back and going, yeah, I'm like, maybe you need some new friends. <laughs> you know, I like, find some friends that have cars and that's then you won't right. be doing this. You know? That's right. Elevate yourself, yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> right. All right. That's I want to ask you a funny question real quick, Cheryl, and okay. then we're going to do some quick wrap up. You've been great. You're amazing. I love everything you're doing. Love the energy. If you had to sum Cheryl up in one word, what would that be? If I had to um, can I use hot mess? You can. <laughs> well, I don't words. think if you're a hot mess, but okay, <laughs> um, I'll let you pick it. I was going to say we should just use the woo. I said, exactly. Yeah, I yeah, liked it. Okay, okay, I perfect. liked it. <laughs> exactly. That's how that's how we're going to think of sure. the woo. That's right. I, think it's so great. I, I have to say, if there's one thing that sums me up based on everything we've been gone through, is thankful. 
Mm. My husband and I had to, we, I think, um, the last episode of Network Today with uh, Jeff Sandine, we talked about gratitude. Awesome. And so I pulled out our thankfulness jar, right? That's okay. what we, we built that around that whole housing crash thing. We're like, we're thankful for green beans. Yes. We're thankful for our fluffy pillows. We're gratitude like, we're gonna... gratitude <laughs> is great. When you, yes, That's gratitude right. is great. And so um, <laughs> it really helped us because I think when you express, we, we're, most of us are thankful in our hearts. Yes. Right? But you have to kind of express it. Right, verbally in order f- to activate things, right? To put them into motion. And so um, I'm really all about that. And so I have to say if there's something that I I am thankful for. I like that. We haven't had anybody say that. That's a good word. That's a good word. What, what like do people it. say? What's the overriding? They say everything. I mean, we had, what did we have today? We had uh, Ted, uh, Tom, what am I calling him, Ted? Tom said tenacious. What was? Yeah. What was the first? It was a, oh, it was so good, Jay. Something maker or something. What was it? Entrepreneur maker. I forgot what he said. Oh, We're gonna have to pull it up. He said something it, we had never heard before. It was so great. We get we get all we've got. We've had discipline. We've had, but I love it when somebody comes up with something that's not you know like the norm. It's different, and I think yeah. that yeah. I think that was good. Maker. Well, I can't wait yeah. to see that word. Yeah, I forgot what the word was. My new Scrabble word. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what, it, and that's the best part. Yeah, yes, that word. I love that question. So, all right, that's I think good. we should do some rapid fire with her. This has been so much fun. Okay. okay. Do you want okay. to start, or you want me to start today? Sure. I'm gonna do my my new one. That do I like your new to, one. Yeah. Yeah. Do your new so, one. So, uh, if you were to pick, what is your favorite season and why? Springtime, because it leads up to uh, my birthday. So she did I love her She did that good. It was yeah, like no was hesitation. A quick one. Yeah. No. Oh, and speaking of which, when you asked, we were talking about the word. When I asked Jay, maybe that word, he spit it out. He said he was ready. <laughs> he, had, he, had the, he had the word picked. Like it was, it was picked out. That's great. It was so funny. Okay. Um, first concert you ever attended. Let's see. So I was at uh, KZPS and I want to say it was Probably Boston. And good one. Yeah, I was like, and good, you're good. It, for, one. And anything from there is like, wah, wah, yep. wah. Ah. So, don't look back. Oh, oh my gosh. Awesome. So, yeah, Boston. That's a, awesome. That's a really cool. good one. Yeah. yeah, that's a fun question, too. Do you have another one? I'm trying to think. Oh, well, so what was your favorite moment in radio? If you were to like look back for one moment that you That's were just a good like, one. Yeah. that was the best ever, what, what, yeah. what would that be? I have to tell you, it was working with Ron Chapman and this particular um, moment, this was, a, so he had just, I want to say, moved to K-Love as a morning show person, but we were no longer working together. And he's coming into the garage there at Fitzhugh in 75, and I'm walking across the, the arms of the garage little opener thing, and um. He rolls down his window and he says, Cheryl, the golden voice. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I arrived. Oh my <laughs> golden <laughs> voice. <laughs> so that might be, um, and I think he was just trying to be nice, but boy, oh boy, you know, you get a Hall of Famer to say something oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Like, awesome. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So fun. Yes. All right. Last question I want to ask you. Okay. What's your favorite type of music? Favorite type of music? I have to say, I love, this is not going to sound crazy, 432 frequency classical. Oh. That's the, a, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So if you really, truly, if yeah. you, you want to get into a new place in your being, oh. get to that 432 and you can find them on YouTube. Okay. Um, it's, it's funny because all my, because people get into my truck and they're like, what are you listening to? And I'm like, classical. And they're like, well, what station is this? There's 101.1 and I'm just chilling out. And they're like, how do you, and I go, okay. Think of every movie you've ever seen. Mm. And I go, and when you're driving down the road, yeah. this is my soundtrack. Yeah. Mm. This is my soundtrack. I make it my own. I make it my own little visual movie. Like it changes the way you see clouds and trees and light. Yeah. And, and I go, it just changes everything for me. Wow. I, go, I can't listen to other, st- there's certain other things. They just bring out different emotions I go, but this is like my little backing soundtrack. Right. That, the, that is super it. great to it know. It makes me think it's kind of like, you know, like on another level, like when you do meditation, because it's it's kind of soothing and you can get inward. You can go inward a little bit, you know, like when you're listening to regular music, you're into the, you're listening to the lyrics and the beat and you're trying to sing along. You, you can't really sing with classical. You just have to kind of go inward, but with right? with classical music, there's so many movements. Yeah. And the crescendos and decrescendos, right. they, they'll sink and you're like, 
like really trying to listen to what's going on. You're like, got your ear to it. And then all yeah. of a sudden it's like, bah, 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 yeah. bah, and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's like, this is crazy. This is, and it, but it really just like pulls at right, you. It's really. Right. What was Tchaikovsky thinking? Yeah, right, yeah. right. This so, is good. This is good. I know. I listen to it every once in a while. So I, can, I, I think I went in my daughter's car one time and she'd had it on her station in there too. So yeah. And, I mean, and listen to that versus the 440. So 440, okay. as I started during COVID, had way too much time. Yeah. 440 was built, if I if I read the story right, um, built as a, a a method to break people down. Okay. I'll have to check it yeah, out. Yeah. So I'll 432 is the natural frequency in which we're we're built. And so music today isn't 432 any longer. Okay, it's I'm gonna all go check it out. Which is why it disrupts the brain. Yeah. But, but that 432 really centers you. You you feel awesome. you'll be like texting me at midnight, Cheryl. I bet you I'm said just... you're you said Cheryl 24 hours, <laughs> remember? Right. I'm gonna be texting you at 2 a.m. in the morning and be like, you said it, you said we'd call you anytime. That's right. <laughs> Don't care what you call me, just call me. So <laughs> So good. All right, Cheryl. Well, if our audience wants to learn a little bit more about the business and a little bit about what you're doing, where do we want to send them? So empoweredadvantage.com is the website. So that's the letter M as in marvelous, um, poweredadvantage.com. And you can actually email me through that, or you just go to powers at empoweredadvantage.com. So marvelous. LinkedIn is another, I'm, I'm all about LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, let's hook up Cheryl with an S, powers as an Austin. Definitely hook up. I love it. I like the marvelous. The marvelous. <laughs> the marvelous. You're so awesome, Cheryl. You it's are too. It's been so much fun talking to Let's you. I knew, again. Like, I knew this was going to be, I said with this, I already said this, I knew this was going to be like this. So <laughs> we do want to say to our audience, of course, if you enjoy our show, please be sure you give us a rating, both on iTunes, Facebook. We can't do this without you. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube. And we want to leave you with the final thought. All right. In order to live, excuse me, in order to live the extraordinary, you have to start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We will see you next time.